Um, welcome everyone. Um, for those of you who haven't met me, my name is Leah Lambert. Um, and tonight's session is all about preparing for interviews, in particular preparing for what we call behavioural interviews. Um, so I'm going to run through some slides with you all. Um, if anyone has questions, probably the best thing to do um, is go down to, um, this should be, or even just put the, might be easier just to put questions in the chat and I'll keep checking the chat so that I can see some questions and I'll also allow time at the end for questions. So um, please, you know, don't hold back, use this time. Um, if you have some questions about interviews, make the most of the opportunity. Um, I'm sure other people will benefit from the question as well. Um, so let's get started. Um, and look, just to give you a background, my background is before I started my business, I worked in recruitment for over 10 years. Um, so look, interviewing is one of my real passion areas. I love helping people prepare for interviews so they can put themselves forward in the best possible way. Um, and I work with people from graduates starting off in their first, you know, applying for their first job as a graduate or an internship right through to CEOs. And you'd be surprised how many executives still really struggle with interviews. Um, I've worked with many executives and CEOs who still find it hard to talk about themselves. So if you're someone who finds interviews difficult because you don't like talking about yourself, then I can tell you, you are not alone. Um, so what we're gonna cover in tonight's session is different types of interviews. There are quite a few different types of interviews. So we're going to run through those different types of interview questions that you might um, be asked in these interviews. I'm going to focus particularly on behavioural interviews um, because these interviews, this type of interviewing is still, is probably the most you know widely used type of interviewing now. Over 95% of the Fortune 500 companies use this type of interviewing. Um, so pretty much any time you go for a job where there is someone from an HR department, um, you'll be asked behavioural interview questions and particularly common in anything, you know, government, local government, universities, etc. Um, we're going to talk about how to answer these questions using a method called the STAR method. And I'm just going to provide some tips on how best to prepare for interviews as well. Um, so again, you know, no matter whether you're right, you know, really starting out your career and maybe in senior school, um, starting to prepare for part-time jobs, or someone who is a parent who's on the call who is applying for more senior roles, this pretty much everything we cover tonight will apply to everyone. First of all, different types of interviews. Um, so the first type of interview is what I call a phone screening interview. Um, and this type of interview is often after you've submitted a resume, a recruiter or someone from the HR department, often they're called a talent acquisition manager or a talent acquisition consultant. They will give you a call, um, perhaps just to ask you some sort of basic questions to see whether you are someone that's worth calling in for a face-to-face -face interview. Uh, and so often these are, you know, asking you a few different questions. I'm going to go through each one in a minute in a bit more detail. Um, the second type of interview would be more of just a, a coffee interview where they might just ask you to meet them in a coffee shop. Um, some people might ask you to meet in a pub. Um, you know, it's more of a really informal interview just to see if you might be the right fit. Um, and this style of interview could be used if you have been headhunted. So if you haven't actually applied for a job, but you've been approached by a recruiter, they don't necessarily um, want to treat it as a formal interview straight away. So it might be more of a, just a general chat. Then we have more formal interviews, which are one-on-one. -on -one. So that might be the, um, the candidate and the hiring manager or the candidate and someone from human resources. Um, and then we have a formal panel interview. And so this would be often in government or corporate jobs where you might have three or four people interviewing you at once. We're going to talk about group interviews and also obviously with COVID, video interviews have become much more the norm. Um, so I'm going to run through those as well. So first of all, a phone interview. Um, often the recruiter will ask you just some basic questions and they might be checking to see whether you are a permanent resident, 
to see if you're eligible to apply for the job. Um, they might want to confirm things like your salary range, your ideal salary range, your notice period, where you live. Um, obviously these days a lot of people don't put their address on resumes um, and so often recruiters want to know how far you would need to travel. They might want to confirm <coughs> how you, <coughs> excuse me, how you want to work, like whether you're open to being back in the office full time or whether you prefer a hybrid working arrangement. Um, so these would be just some basic questions to see whether it's worth taking it further. I think uh, my first piece of advice is often these will these calls will get you on the hop. You might be about to jump on a train. Um, seems to me for whenever people call me, I'm always in the aisle of the shopping center or with loud music or at the checkout. Um, if that is the case, don't be afraid to say, look, I'm really sorry, but it's not a good time for me to answer these questions. It's really noisy, I can't um, focus could I get into a quiet place and call you back? Okay, you don't want to, um, you want to be prepared for this type of call um, because it will decide whether they take you through to the next process. Um, so don't be afraid to say, look, it's not a good time, can I call you back? Um, the next type of med um, interview, as I mentioned before, would be more of a casual interview. So this might be, again, where you've been approached about a job and they just want to get a feel for the whether Again, it's worth taking this forward in a more formal way. Um, so often it might be just an informal discussion about your motivations and what you're looking for in the next role and a little bit more information about the company and the job. Um, so it's often just a meet and greet. Um, some hiring managers might prefer to meet people this way rather than it being formal. It's really up to the recruiter. Um, but again, my advice would be still treat it like a formal interview. I find sometimes people when they're in a coffee shop or in a more casual environment, they might let their guard down and maybe be a little bit too honest about things. Um, and you know, often the hiring manager is still expecting you to answer fairly formal questions, even though it's in a casual setting. So I'd still prepare for a formal interview, even if the environment is more casual. Um, then we have probably just a more of a one-on-one -on -one formal interview. Um, and this will usually include a range of different questions, which we're gonna go through soon. Um, if it's with a hiring manager, it might be more related to the actual role. So when I say technical, um, for example, if it's a marketing position and you're meeting with the marketing manager, they might focus more on your actual marketing experience and wanna hear more about specific examples of marketing campaigns you've worked on um, or you know specific marketing experience if it's with human resources then there's a chance that it will be more behavioral based um, or a combination of the two and behavioral based questions are linked to questions are linked to the competencies required to do the job so not necessarily your experience but they might be competencies such as teamwork leadership, um, problem solving skills, etc. Um, so we're going to go through that in a bit more detail. So that would be more of a, you know, one on one interview or one to two. And then we have a panel interview. Um, so panel interviews are where you might be you as the candidate and you might have three or four. Um, I had a client just the other day, a very senior candidate who I think had six people on the panel, which is quite a intimidating situation. Often these interviews are very formal. There's not a lot of chit chat getting to know you. They basically have a script of questions that they will ask every candidate. Um, there might be one person asking the questions, one pe person taking notes and one person who um, is sort of a bit objective. They might be from a different area of the organisation altogether. Um, sometimes they'll all take notes. Um, often these interviews, there might be very little eye contact. Um, you know, they don't really give you much, so it's very difficult to know whether you are performing well or not. Um, so they, they can be a little bit stressful, um, but yeah, often again, that's very much behavioral based interview questions. Um, and then we have a group interview. Um, so group interviews are often used where there is a high volume of candidates 
for only a small amount of jobs. And so a group interview is a way of screening a higher volume of candidates faster than it would if it was one-on-one -on -one interviews. Um, so if you are applying for internships or graduate positions in professional services firms like the big four, engineering, consulting, um, banks, etc., then it's often you will, the group interview will be a part of the process before you get to a one-on-one -on -one interview. Um, it's also used a lot in jobs like retail, hospitality, call centres, a lot in emergency services, like applying for police, firefighting, jobs like that. Um, this will often be a key part of the process. So a group interview will be structured differently for every organisation. Um, in the past, these group interviews were you, usually a group of people were called into a, an assessment centre or an office and you would run through a number of different activities and tasks during that day, sometimes ending with an interview with a partner or a senior person. Um, and the sorts of things you might do would be group activities. Um, they might get you doing something like building a tower out of paper cups um, or <clears throat> some sort of challenge where as a group you have to work out how to escape from a desert island with only certain pieces of equipment um, and what they do it's often nothing to do with the job but they are observing you they'll often have organizational psychologists in the room observing you and they're looking for key behaviors such as teamwork leadership communication skills influencing skills um, again certain competencies that they're looking for in candidates sometimes there might be role plays um, so for example, if you were going for a job in retail, um, they might get, they will often bring in actors who will act out the part of an angry customer and you have to do a role play and work, um, you know, demonstrate to them how you would deal with such a situation. With COVID, obviously this has changed the group interview structure and most organisations in the last couple of years, well, they've had to um, run these group interviews online. Um, and so that means it would be, I guess, a situation like we're in now. There might be seven people, for example, on a Zoom call and you have to uh, perhaps present to the group, do a two minute intro about yourself. Again, they might get you doing some group activities and discussing things online. Um, so they've had to be a little bit creative with how they run those sessions. Um, it'll be interesting to see whether they revert back to doing them in person or not. Um, but really at the end of the day, they're just observing the candidates for key behaviours, again, to decide whether they should get through to the next round. So that's the group interview. Um, and then we've obviously got video interview. So most of the clients that I've been coaching the last two or so years have done Zoom interviews or interviews on Teams. Um, I think, you know, the first thing is you still need to look professional. You still need to have good lighting. Ideal, ideally looking into a window or a light on your face. Um, make sure you always have the tech set up correct. Um, you don't want the, you know, the tech not working on the day. So still that you treat it like any other interview, um, a video interview. Okay, I'll just check the chat. Um, yeah, that was my question and it was in reference to the phone screening um, part of the process. Ah, uh, yes. So Daniela's question, is this the right time to mention things like working less than the full time, i.e. four days? Uh, good question, um, Daniela. Look, personally, I would probably wait until you are the, one of the preferred candidates before having that conversation. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, if you were someone who only wanted to work two days or three days, then I think, you know, you probably need to be upfront. Yep. Often organisations would negotiate down to four days for the right person. Yeah. But I would probably wait till you are, you know, maybe you've had yep. at least one interview and you know that you're yeah. in the running. Okay. Yeah, that's good advice. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so then um, let's have a chat about the different types of questions that you might get in an interview. Um, so first of all, I call the first type of question just general questions. 
And so these would be questions that you would encounter probably in any job, regardless of what type of job function it is. Um, so for example, actually I'm gonna go through those in the minute, but um, they're questions that you would get in a marketing interview, an accounting interview, an interview in retail. They, they tend to be fairly standard questions across the board. Um, the second type of question are more scenario or situational based. And this is where they would ask you how you would behave or react in a certain environment or in a certain situation. This type of questioning is definitely less common these days and it's been replaced by the behavioural based questions. Um, so in most cases, you will get a mixture of more like general questions, um, some questions about your specific experience in that area and then behavioural questions, which I'll run through in a minute. Um, so the general questions are kind of like your warm up questions, um, but you would always still prepare a response for these and practice them. I would say your top five would be these. Um, tell us about yourself. What do you know about our company or why have you applied? Um, what are your strengths? Do you have a weakness and why should we hire you? So I would prepare for any interview. I would always prepare for those five questions. Um, and look, it is an opportunity for them to get to know you, but because they're also often the first questions, you really want to put some effort in so that they really sit up and go, oh, well, you know, we've got a good one here. Um, let's take some notice of this candidate. Um, so do your homework. Um, tell us about yourself. I would prepare sort of a two to three minute um, response to that question. Um, think about things that are most relevant to the job. Um, so you can include a little bit about your personal life or your sport or things that you do, but try and make the most of it relevant to the job you're applying for. So you might talk about your educational background, any particular jobs that you've had in the past, whether it's part-time or full-time, what skills you've developed and why you're interested in the role you're applying for. Um, but, you know, things about pets or holidays and things like that, you know, probably leave that for a, a coffee conversation once you start work. Um, just focus on what's relevant and what is going to be a selling point for you. Um, obviously, most people know to do your homework about the company. I would always jump on their website, jump onto LinkedIn, onto their company page and do a bit of research about the organisation. You should know what their uh, services are, what their products are, um, perhaps who key people are in the organisation. You can use LinkedIn also to research the people you're interviewing before you actually have the interview. Um, so the more you know about the company and think about, I guess, changes or challenges going in that industry as well. Um, strengths and weakness and why should we hire you are also important questions. Um, the next type of questions would be what I call motivational questions and these fit into the general questions category. Um, when, a, when an organisation is re, uh, recruiting for a role, there's really three things they want to know. First of all, they want to know, can you do the job? Um, so do you have the relevant skills or experience to do the job? Um, the second thing they want to know is, do you actually want the job? And that's where these questions fit in. And the third, question, the third thing they need to know is, will you fit in? Um, so can you do the job? Do you want the job? and will you fit in? Um, and so will you fit in is more around, do you, are your values aligned to the organisation? Um, do you behave and in, in the way you work, is it um, the same sort of the way we would expect people to behave in our organisation? So is it a good culture fit? But these questions are regarding your motivations as to test whether you really want the job. So, and do you want the job for the right reasons? So have you really thought about why this particular job interests you? So what is it about the actual job itself? What is it about working for that organisation? And you know why is this the right timing for you to make a move from your current job? 
um, they might also ask you questions around, you know, where you see yourself in five to 10 years um, to see if you are realistic about where you could be in that time um, and to see whether you've actually really thought about a future for yourself in the organisation. Um, so those are important questions as well. Um, as I mentioned before, situational questions do occasionally come up. Um, and this is, they're interested to see how you would react or behave in a certain situation. Um, so again, it could be around how you'd handle a conflict, how you would manage competing deadlines. Um, so questions like that. Um, the reason these questions are not used very often anymore is because you would only be able to provide a generic response about how you would handle it, rather than an evidence-based response providing a specific example. Um, so if you were asked a question like this, it might be because the interviewer perhaps um, hasn't been trained how to ask behavioural questions. So what I would always recommend is that you could talk generically about how you would handle it, but then also back that up with a specific example. Um, so that's what I'd recommend in that situation. And then we have behavioural interview questions. Um, sometimes these are also called competency-based questions. And the idea behind these questions is to get an evidence-based response um, and to demonstrate that because past performance is the best way for them to predict how you would behave in the future. Um, so these responses need to be very specific responses about how you've dealt with these similar problems or challenges in previous roles. Um, when I say previous roles, it, you know, if you are just starting your career, it could be an example from school, it could be an example from a sports club, a committee that you're on at uni. Um, it doesn't need to be work related, a paid work example. It could also be from other parts of your life, like doing uni projects as a team, for example. So um, the way you will recognise these questions is that they will you always start with, tell us about a time when, describe a situation or give us an example. So whenever you hear a question start in that way, you know that it's a behavioural question and you have to have a very specific example or story um, to show when you've successfully used that skill before. And so when you read a job description, it will usually um, outline the role, what the key responsibilities are, and then it will say, um, you know, what we're looking from a candidate, what, you know, what are we looking for in a candidate, or what key skills are, we, are required. And this is where they will list things like teamwork, might be leadership skills, it might be verbal communication, written communication, conflict resolution, um, collaboration, competencies such as that. And so basically to prepare for that interview, I would have a story or a star example for each of those. Um, again, you might only get asked three behavioural questions or four, but if you go into that interview with eight or nine prepared, then you can guarantee that you'll pretty much be able to answer any of those questions. So when you are asked a question or preparing for these questions, um, oh, sorry, I'm just gonna go back here. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to talk to you before I go into that in terms of how a, in a typical interview might be structured. Um, and then we'll, we'll go into talking more about using the STAR method. Um, so first of all, there might be just a general welcome, bit of chit chat, an introduction to the organisation and the role. They'll probably then go through those more general questions, the getting to know you questions, understanding your motivations. Um, and then they will probably ask you some behavioural based questions. And the behavioural based questions can also not only be linked to skills such as teamwork, time management, etc but they might also um, be linked to the values of the organisation. So I would always look at the website to look at the organisation's values. Um, and they might be things like relationships, trust, integrity, teamwork, etc. 
um, because it's very likely that they will also ask you for an example of when you've demonstrated that value. Um, so give us an example of a time when you've demonstrated respect or describe a situation when you've worked with someone from a diverse background. So diversity and inclusion is often a value as well. Um, and then at the end, you will often be asked if you have some questions that you would like to ask. And then you would be, um, then the interview would come to a close. Um, so that would be sort of a typical structure. I would say most interviews would be between 40 to 60 minutes. Um, occasionally they will be a little bit shorter, um, but you would normally prepare for sort of 45 to 60 minutes um, and hopefully have time to ask some good questions to the interview panel at the end. So in terms of being interview ready, um, the most important thing is to obviously reduce stress, which will reduce your nerves on the day. Um, and to do that, you really need to think about what are the key competencies in that job. And once you do that, you can then anticipate the likely questions. Um, and so by being able to anticipate the questions and having responses prepared and practiced, you will greatly reduce your stress on the day. Some people perform really well in interviews and find it relatively easy, but I would say most people find them quite stressful um, and don't like going into an interview and not knowing what they're going to be asked. Um, so basically the more you pre can prepare, um, the better you should feel on the day. Um, so in terms of your preparation, um, the first thing I would say, as I mentioned before, go through the job ad and the position description if you have one. Um, often you'll only see a job ad. Um, and so I would always go through with a highlighter and highlight keywords. So it might be words like teamwork. Um, it might be words like initiative, problem solving, written communication. Um, so they would be the competencies required for this job. Um, as a result of that, you can then anticipate the questions. Um, then you can come up with some specific star examples. And I'm going to talk about the star structure in a minute. And then you would practice them. Um, so really, it is just a process. You identify the competencies or the values. Then you can anticipate the questions, prepare your examples and go away and practice. And if you do that, um, you know, I would say do some mock interviews, some practice interviews with some friends or with your family. Um, and then hopefully you would cover, you know, you've already covered maybe 90% of the types of questions you'll get in the interview. Um, so you've read the position description and you've highlighted the keywords um, and focusing on that key selection criteria. So once you know what the key selection criteria is, that's when you wanna go away and prepare your examples. And when they ask behavioral questions, um, they are looking for key skills. So um, for example, if you were going for a customer service focus role, um, so it might be a role where you are in a call center answering calls from the public. It might be working in retail it might be working in hospitality, then there are usually sort of a core set of skills or competencies required for that role. So if you're in a job where you are dealing with the public, they would be looking for skills like customer service, you know, a time when you've gone above and beyond to help a customer. They might be looking for verbal communication. If you're in a call center environment, you have to write emails to to customers, then it might be written communication. Most jobs, when you're dealing with the public, there's some element of managing conflict or difficult customers. Um, so an example of where you've managed that sort of situation. Time management is usually important in most roles, as is teamwork. Um, and resilience will come up if you're in a job where perhaps you are dealing with angry people or complaining customers. Um, then they might even ask you for an example for resilience. So those would be sort of the typical competencies or selection criteria for a customer service based role. 
Um, sales are similar, um, slightly different types of skills, but it would be more around perhaps your negotiation skills, your ability to build relationships with new clients or customers, um, being target focused. Obviously working in sales, you have to be driven to achieve KPIs. Um, so they might want to know, an, you know, an example of where you've had to do that in the past and overcome certain challenges. And again, things like teamwork and resilience are quite common. Um, so we've already talked about how you would recognize a behavioral interview question. Um, and once you've seen that question, um, the next thing is to prepare what we call star examples. Um, and this is very um, a common structure and it's basically just a way of structuring your story. So, you know, when you're at school, you learn to write an essay that has a intro body conclusion. The STAR method is a similar thing. So it's basically just a way to structure your story. And it also makes it very easy for the panel to mark you. Okay, so they're expecting you to give your examples in this structure. If you don't, um, it's very difficult to pass these interviews. Um, so if you take anything away tonight, it's learning how to understand this STAR method and practicing it um, and you will need to use it for basically the rest of your career. Um, so what is the STAR method? Um, so first of all, the S in STAR is where you would describe the situation. And so this is really just giving context to the hiring manager or the person interviewing you. Um, so let's say the example was teamwork, you would describe where you were when you worked in a team, maybe what the team was working on, maybe you were working on an event or preparing for an event. Um, you would talk briefly about what your role in the team is and why teamwork is so important. So it's in the situation that you really want to sort of set up what is the, the challenge that the team is facing and you know why is it so important that you put you in your role play a contribution to the team. Um, so the situation is really just describing, you know, where you are, what is the challenge? The task is the next bit, T for task. And that's just explaining what you knew that you needed to do to help the team. So situation and task is really just giving them some background. Um, so they can really picture where you are and what's going on. It's not the part where you get the marks. Um, the most important part always is the actions. So I would be aiming for, say, um, so I've, yeah, these percentages are, are a little bit different because this was using a different method, but the actions would be around 50, 60% of your time. Um, so you really need to step them through what you actually did to deal with that situation or that problem. Um, so it's about not so much what the team did, but how you personally contributed to helping the team. Um, and what sort of behaviours did you demonstrate? Um, so if it's around teamwork, you know, how do we know that you were a good team player? Um, maybe you briefed your team on what was going to happen. Maybe you were communicating throughout the event with your team, checking in on people to see if they needed a hand. So basically the more actions you can get in there that show that you're a good team player, the better. And then you'd finish off with the result. So what was the outcome? Was it a positive outcome? Did you learn anything? Were there some good things that happened? Were there things that perhaps didn't go so well that you've changed since? Um, so any um, results that you can give, um, sometimes you might be able to quantify those depending on your role. You might be able to say, as a result of this, I was able to increase sales by 10%. Um, but in a lot of cases, you can't do that. Um, so just think about, you know, how you contributed and what was the positive impact that you were able to bring to your team and to the organisation. Um, so in terms of preparing using the STAR method, what we really need to think about, like I mentioned before, is if teamwork is the competency, well, what are the desired behaviours of a good team player? Um, and then it's thinking about brainstorming as many teamwork examples as you can, and then just choosing one that you can structure into the STAR method 
um, and making sure that you've got really good actions coming through in your example. So I'm not sure if anyone has any questions, but please feel free to just dump the questions into the chat if you're not understanding anything that I'm talking about. Um, so a few tips when it comes to preparing for these behavioural questions. Um, always try and use relevant examples. So think about the job you're applying for and what might be some of the day-to-day -day challenges. Um, so for example, like I mentioned before, um, if you are applying for a job where you're dealing with the general public, um, there might be dealing with complaints from customers. Um, you know, there might be an occasionally an angry customer who gets upset and it's really difficult um, to provide a service to. Um, there might be situations where you do have to go above and beyond to help someone with something. Um, it might be, for example, an elderly person that's um, struggling to find a, a gift or something like that and you really go above and beyond to help them. So think about what would be the challenges in the role you're applying for and try and think of some relevant examples, if you can, um, that would satisfy the, the hiring manager that you've dealt with similar problems before. Um, again, you wanna use really specific examples. Um, so you don't wanna talk generally about how you manage your time. I would always choose a particular time period or talk about a particular person that you've worked with um, and make it as specific as you can um, so that they know that it's actually happened in the past. Always remember to structure your responses using the STAR method. Um, and in terms of the timing, I would always say um, if you could plan your examples to be sort of maybe around the three minute mark, maybe three to four minutes, um, that's probably a good length of time for behavioural responses and it allows you to um, get into enough detail in the actions for the panel to really um, be able to give you some good marks for that response. The relevant examples where you can make sure they're really specific, structure them using STAR and don't feel like, often people feel like you've got to rush these examples. Um, don't feel like you've got to rush them, tell it just like a story. Um, and again, you know, reassuring them that when these situations happen, that you would handle it in the way that they would expect someone in their organisation to do so. So I'm just gonna run through an example with you just so you can see how a star example would, would look. Um, again, there's no like just one example for leadership. Leadership could be many, many different types of examples. Um, so if the competency or the skill that they're testing is leadership, they could ask this question also in many different ways. Um, so for example, they might say, tell us about a time when you used your leadership skills, um, which is quite sort of a broad example. Um, another question might be a time when you took a leadership position without a leadership title. So what they're looking for is where you have stepped up and demonstrated leadership, even though you were not a manager or a team leader, um, where you've taken that initiative. Um, sometimes they might ask you about a time when you've led people or a team during a difficult time. Um, so there, there could be like 20 or 30 different ways that they could ask a question about leadership. So I would always say prepare an example, um, not so much for the question, but prepare an example for the competency of leadership that you can hopefully tweak depending on the question. Um, so just to give you an example um, of how you might structure it, um, this one is about being a team leader in a customer service team. Um, so in the situation I'm outlining um, in my recent position as team leader of a customer service team, the company I was working for had a restructure and that resulted in five of our team being made redundant. This meant that there was a much higher workload for the remaining members um, which meant people were working long hours, they weren't terribly happy about it, and as a result, mistakes were being made. Um, so you can see in the situation, you've really explained you know, where you're working and what the problem is. 
Then um, the candidate would go on to explain the task. So as a more senior member of the team, I felt it was my job to get performance back on track and to try and build morale and to support particularly some of the new members in the team. Um, so basically you're just stating, you know, what you know that you could do to help the team. So in the next part, um, you'll notice that the actions all start with I, and this is really important, even in a teamwork example, what the panel want to know is how you personally contributed to the team, not so much what the team did. Um, and this is a part that people find really difficult. Most people will say we, um, and that's not what they want to hear in an interview. Um, so first of all, you know, I scheduled a meeting with the team to brainstorm ideas. I showed appreciation for their hard work and thanked them for that. I asked the team if anyone had any ideas that we could um, implement to improve efficiency. I made it clear that it was a brainstorming meeting and no ideas were stupid. I then wrote all the ideas on the whiteboard and we voted for the best five. I then assigned each person um, to look into these ideas um, and to go so that we could go ahead and implement some of these to improve our situation. Um, so you can see strong action words, you know, I scheduled, I showed, I asked, I wrote, I assigned. You want to use strong I statements and strong action words in this action section. And basically the more actions you can put into this section, the better. Um, so they're the actions and then we move into the result. Um, so the team responded well to the meeting. They liked the idea of having some input into their processes. Um, we came up with two great ideas that we implemented quickly that saved time. The team stopped complaining um, and started to look for different ways of improving things. I also received great feedback from management for getting the team back on the track, back on track, sorry. Um, so the results, you know, there's a number of different things, how the it helped the team, getting good feedback, that could be from a manager, it could be from customers, um, and also adding, you know, improving morale in the team. Um, so there's quite a few different positive results from that particular example. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how you would structure these types of responses. Um, so look, a couple of things, again, don't spend too long describing the situation. Where people often go wrong in these interviews, they spend way too long talking about the situation and then really just might give one action and then jump straight into the result. You need to remember that it's, a, it's not so much what you do, but it's how you do things that is most important to the person interviewing you. And the how is in the actions. So you really need to go into that level of detail in order to get enough ticks to pass the question. As I mentioned before, always use I statements instead of we statements. Um, most people say to me like, you know, if I'm talking about a team though, shouldn't I be talking about we rather than I? At the end of the day, they wanna know how you helped your team. Um, so you can still use statements that show that you do involve other people. Um, so for example, you could say, I organized a meeting with the team to run through some ideas and get their feedback. So you, even though you're saying I, you're still showing that you are collaborative, that you enjoy working with other people, um, that you're not just going off and doing things on your own, that you are um, most definitely involving other people. Um, yeah, as I said before, if you use the STAR method and focus on your actions, it makes it easy for them to mark you um, and the more actions, the better. Um, and if you can, as I mentioned, you can quantify your results and that might be specific feedback you've received. It might be an email, a testimonial, or it could be like a percentage or a dollar figure. Um, so then once you have brainstormed your examples, um, you would then um, draft them into the STAR method or the STAR-LA method. STAR-LA is um, just a bit of an add-on. So you would also talk about what you learned and how you would apply it to the role. Um, so I would, or I would say if you're someone who hasn't prepared for these interviews, just stick to the STAR method. Um, the STAR-LA method is something you could add on to a little bit later. 
So write out your examples um, and start reading them aloud to, and time yourself. Um, so as I said, you know, around two minutes to answer the general questions, maybe around three minutes for the behavioral questions. Um, you could record yourself actually reading out how you want it to sound and play it back to yourself. Um, the fruit bowl technique is basically you just throw a bunch, you get a whole list of questions um, from the internet. If you're looking for a bunch of questions, you can go to my website and download 100, quest 100 questions, interview questions. And then you could cut them out and just throw them into a bowl, pull them out or get a friend to, or a parent to just ask you questions. Um, and that's the best way to practice because you just get used to being put on the spot and having to think on your feet. Um, so you can use that method or just provide a list of 10 questions to a friend or a sibling, um, get them to ask the question and practice responding. Um, and look, if you are doing a video interview, I would also strongly recommend that you practice talking into the camera. Um, sometimes, you know, if you're someone who doesn't spend a lot of time talking into the screen, um, it can be a little bit unusual and feel a bit strange. So even set up a Zoom interview for yourself and you can record yourself and just practice asking yourself the question and trying to talk into the camera. Um, and you definitely want to try and talk into the camera rather than um, sometimes people have multiple screens and different monitors and they're looking up over here when you really need to be looking into the, into the camera. Um, so practice that if it's something that you haven't had a lot of experience doing. Um, yeah, so look, one of my favourite quotes, um, which I think definitely applies to interviews is, the more you sweat in peace, the less you bleed in war. Um, so for most people that I coach who get nervous, um, if they prepare this way, it will definitely reduce the nerves because they can go into that interview feeling pretty confident that any question they come that comes their way, they've already prepared a response and they've practiced it. Um, and look, it might be occasionally they get caught out with something that's a little bit unusual, um, but in most cases, they feel pretty prepared um, and less nervous as a result. Um, now, at the end of the interview, once they've finished firing questions at you, um, they'll often ask you if you have some questions for the panel. Um, so this is a really good chance for you to show your interest in the role. I would always prepare open questions rather than closed questions. Um, basically, what you wanna do here is create some good two-way conversation. So getting, asking some good questions to get them talking a bit more about the role, might be um, talking about their training programs, might be talking about the team that you would be joining, um, career progression opportunities. So think about maybe three or four questions that you could ask, ask them at, end, at the end. Um, you don't wanna be asking questions where you really should know the answer from just reading stuff on the website or questions that you can um, you know, easily just do a bit of research. The idea is to ask questions that will create that good conversation to start building some rapport. Um, and that means you can relax a little bit, just take a deep breath and rather than just responding, it turns into more of a two-way conversation. Um, and that's a really nice way to finish off the interview. So go in with some questions that you've prepared um, maybe, you know, there might be one or two that get covered in the interview. So if they're talking about the role, but if you've got a couple of others up your sleeve, um, it's always good to have some questions at the end. Um, and then finally, it's really important to close the interview. Um, so once you have asked your questions, they will probably say, do you have any more questions? Um, and that's where you can say, look, I feel like you've answered everything. Um, and then you could prepare and um, have a little statement that closes the interview. Um, so I would always suggest thanking the interview panel or the hiring manager for their time. Um, if there's some been some things that have been discussed about the role that really excite or interest you, you could um, make reference to those. Um, but don't be afraid to tell them that you're really interested, that you are really excited about the opportunity, that you you know, you would love to, um, you know, take the position if they thought you were the right candidate. 
don't be afraid to hold back. Um, remember I said at the beginning, you know, one of those three things they need to know is, do you really want the role? Um, and often candidates feel like they have to hold back and that when they walk out, the panel has really no idea if they are really keen or not. Um, if you like, you can also ask them what the next steps would be or when, you know, on what date, by what date might you expect to hear whether you've been um, pushed through to the next to the next round. Um, and that gives you a time frame to work with. Um, so if you haven't heard anything by that date, you can send an email or put in a follow up call. Not, le not left hanging, wondering what's going on with the role. Um, and afterwards, I would also recommend sending an email thanking the panel for their time. Um, if they've been, if you've been given their contact details or their email address, um, definitely get someone to proofread it. The last thing you want to do is have a great interview and then blow it by sending an email full of typos. Um, keep it short, probably just, you know, a couple of paragraph or two, um, perhaps mention again something that was discussed in the role that has really interested you. Um, and again, reinforce that you're really interested. Um, so this might not, might not be relevant in for all interviews. Um, for example, if it was for a group interview or for a graduate interview where they're interviewing hundreds of applicants. Um, but if it's an interview where you know there's maybe been five people interviewed, um, by all means, you know, send them a note thanking them and um, confirming your interest. Um, so that is pretty much it for my presentation. Um, does anyone have any questions? Um, I just wanted to say thank you for making that so clear. Um, it's something that I do want to be able to talk to Alex about, um, you know, as she's sort of getting into year 10 and 11. Um, but it's also something I've recently been through. And it, although it was an internal interview, um, what I loved is I've actually now understood what they put me through <laughs> because I, I didn't have to prepare necessarily for it to that degree because my understanding was going to be a little bit more formal than what it was. But it's really interesting. I now look at it and think, oh, yes, that's the exact process they put me through. And it was very structured in the end. Um, so it's been really insightful to see oh. exactly what I just went through. <laughs> so. And being able to see it from the other side. Yes, exactly. So thank yeah, you. Um, Great. Um, you know, you make a really good point, Jane, because internal interviews, often people perhaps don't prepare as much as an external candidate would. Um, and I think there's there can be a real, um, you can really sort of stuff things up in an internal interview by assuming that they already know how you work. Yes. Um, and look, often they will have someone on the panel that knows you quite well and has worked with you. But there's also a chance that there's people on the panel that are from a different area or from a you know completely different part of the organisation. Um, and so I think that's kind of often difficult for internal candidates because they feel like, well, I can't tell them that because they know that person or they already know that I worked on that project. Um, but it's really important that they still sell themselves and really treat it like an external interview. Yes, very good yes. one. So <laughs> no, that's a good point. And did they structure the interview in a similar way, the general questions, and or was it all behavioural? No, it was almost exactly that layer. Okay. So, <laughs> it's almost like I was following the script through and just went, wow, that would be... And even to the point we had a first initial chat with the hiring manager um, and then had a more uh, a second interview with two of the other people that I would be working with and then the next interview was uh, with the hiring manager and the HR and that's where there were behavioural questions tell me a time when and, and I'm thinking you know all this you know everything about me um, mm -hmm. but you're exactly right it's where I thought oh gosh it's really hard to come up with these examples because you know the people I'm giving the examples to. <laughs> yeah that is, that is tricky but I mean, as you would know, like it's really hard to think of these examples on the spot. Yes. Um, and I think the reason why I'm so passionate about this area, I remember my first graduate interview 
and um, I was asked behavioural questions and I had no idea what they were. I, I don't think I prepared at all other than going and buying a suit. <laughs> um, I'm sure I wouldn't have got the job now. Um, but they asked me, uh, tell us about a time when you were misunderstood. Um, and I just really couldn't think of anything. Um, what they were getting at was a time when I've perhaps communicated something and that it wasn't understood and then I've had to adapt my communication and communicate in a different way. Um, so in hindsight, I, I would have had an example, but at the time I just went blank and really just wanted the floor to swallow me up. Um, and so I don't like other people to, you know, feel that way. I, I want people to be prepared. Yeah, that's really good. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you for sharing your story. Um, well, look, thank you everyone. I'll let you all get on and have your dinner. Um, if you are interested in more information, you can go to my website, which is the Relaunch Me website. Um, as I mentioned, there's a couple of podcast episodes about interviews, which might be useful. Um, there's one about, there's uh, two in particular about preparing for interviews. Um, and then you can also go into, I think the tab is Fun Stuff, and you can download um, 100 behavioural interview questions from my website as well. Um, and there's just a question in the chat. I'm wondering, would we be able to access the recording or slides? Yes, it has been recorded. The video has been recorded and it will be, um, um, Aisha might be able to tell us where, but it, will you be able to access it through the website? Um, yeah, sorry, I'm very, very sick, but excuse my voice. Um, it, it is recorded and uh, it would be available. Uh, but uh, not immediately it would be, uh, because we encourage people to come and uh, be a part of it online. So um, eventually you'll be able to see it in our e-news um, and that's where it would come out first. So if you haven't updated your details yet with us, do that and you'll be able to see um, these recordings and the previous ones uh, on there. Thanks, Aisha. Um, well, good night, everyone. And yeah, feel free to, if you have any questions, you can also um, message me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to provide some information if you need some assistance. Thanks so much, Leah. Bye. Thanks. Thanks, Danielle. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.